Genius Birders are amazing. I'm just, I couldn't be happier with this company. We absolutely love these cages. One, one at a time, okay guys? Hey guys, welcome to another Caternix Corner. Glad everyone could join us tonight. Um, this is probably just going to be a short live stream, guys. I just wanted to uh, check in tonight and uh, you know give you guys a few announcements. Uh, we do have a couple giveaways that we'll be doing tonight also, but um, I do have to cut this one short right around 8 o'clock, um, if not a little bit before. Um, so yeah, um, not a whole lot new around here today um or actually this week uh, i did miss last week's live stream i had something come up and i couldn't make it but uh yeah basically just been working out in the in the quail room uh getting a lot of new breeder sets put together um i did uh just release a new video on uh the Caternix corner youtube channel uh it's about a uh a hatcher that is uh, was sent to me by hatching time and uh, basically we just talk a little bit about the benefits of using a hatcher and uh, kind of like an unboxing and review video of that but for those of you guys who don't use hatchers um, it, it's really a good idea watch that video guys um, it's it's nice to be able to uh, have a dedicated cabinet or box just for hatching out your eggs that way your incubators stay nice and clean and uh, you've got one box that uh you know you've got a you hatch out all your eggs in and then you've got to do a, a thorough cleaning on that so um yeah just check that out i'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy it uh, i do have a couple quick announcements real quick as always shout out to our sponsors uh, southwest game birds and hatching time uh, southwest game birds offers a 10 percent discount code uh, off on their website for uh Anything that you purchase on their website, if you use the coupon code Caternix Corner during checkout, so check that out. And also, Michael uh, donates uh, some hatching eggs to give away here on the channel, and that's much appreciated. Also, check out Hatching Time at HatchingTime.com. Um, they got a very large selection of uh, poultry equipment. I know a lot of you guys know that I use a lot of uh, hatching time equipment, and I'm really impressed with it. I like them. Uh, and they also donate a $50 uh, gift certificate um, to give away on the website. So we'll be, we'll be giving that away tonight. So we've got three giveaways. We're going to be doing uh, the $50 hatching time gift certificate. We're going to be doing a 30 count of hatchery choice from Southwest Game Birds. And also... Um, for any members that are watching or any uh, people in the chat room that are watching that are from Florida, uh, I am going to be giving away a 30 count of uh, mixed hatching eggs from my stop flock from uh, Gulf Coast Quail. Um, so if you're from Florida, uh, make sure you uh, note that in the uh, chat room. Just tell me where you're from, and I'll keep you in mind for the giveaway. So, again, we have three giveaways. The only reason I'm only giving away to Florida guys is I am still waiting to get my AI renewal done. And legally, I can't ship out of the state without the AI uh, testing. So, as soon as that's done, we will start shipping out of state. And, again, as far as Gulf Coast Quail goes, uh, it's going to kind of be a, a slow start. Um, I've got a lot of stuff that I'm working with right now. I'm not going to go into that, but basically health issues. And once I get that all straightened out, then I'm going to, you know, really concentrate on um, producing hatching eggs uh, for you guys uh, to order, and we'll ship them out of state. Uh, also, um, I have actually haven't seen them around in a while, so I don't know if they're even in here tonight. Um, we have a couple moderators that usually show up but we're kind of on a, a goofy schedule right now so but anna poe from dirty south homestead and amber mclernan um they do a wonderful job so shout out to them um let's see we already mentioned the new uh video uh i do want to say guys that 
Um, I got questioned the other day about the uh, Caternix Kids Project, which is a project that we do over on the uh, CaternixCorner.com website. Um, we had a couple of our sponsors <coughs> basically asked to take a break uh, from doing the giveaways. So what I'm doing right now, I'm going to take the rest of this month and probably into uh, next month uh, and trying to just see if I can't find a couple of new sponsors that want to you know, help out with that kids project. I do have uh, a little bit of money stuck away in the kitty for the incubator. We're, we're buying incubators now. But um, for those of you who have kids that might be interested, um, you can check out the project's uh, description, I guess you'd say, can be found over on CaternixCorner.com website. Uh, right up in the nav bar, there's a link for the uh, Caternix Kids Project. Um, I do have quite a few kids that have submitted their entries uh, over the past year or eight months, whatever it's been. <clears throat> and I still have all those, but we are continually taking more and we will start with the giveaways. <coughs> I got to get a drink. My throat's killing me. We will start with the giveaways again shortly. Uh, also, check out the Caternix Corner Library. That's another link that you can find. I don't have that link here, do I? Uh, it's CaternixCornerLibrary.com. You can either go directly to it, or you can access it through CaternixCorner.com. That website's got a link. Uh, we just did some uh, article and video updates on that on the library site, so there's a lot of good information there, uh, especially for those of you who are new. Uh, and also... Um, we're, we're basically coming into uh, hatching season. Everybody right now is, you know, gung-ho on buying hatching eggs, getting ready for the upcoming spring. Um, check out the ccfarmmarket.com, um, which is basically uh, the Caternix Corner Farm Market. And uh, there's, I noticed uh, today that there was already some people who are posting new ads there. Uh, but check it out. If, you, if you've got hatching eggs for sale, you can post them on the farm market. Uh, anything farm related, you can post them there. You can share your link to your ad over on the Facebook group pages. And uh, you're not going to get, you know, flagged by Facebook for that. Um, so, yeah, check that out. There was one other thing I was going to say. Oh, we, we're going to be doing um, something a little bit new here. And I don't know if I'm going to do it on Tuesdays during the normal live streams. Or try to create another day. I think I'm just going to do it on the on the uh, the regular Tuesday night live stream. What I'm thinking of doing is doing uh, a series of live streams geared just towards the beginners. Uh, it seems like right now we've got a lot of new people getting into quail, and I was thinking of doing like a you know a, I won't say entry level, but a, a beginner's guide. Um, where you know newbies can come in and they can ask questions in the chat room. Uh, we'll go over you know the basics, you know uh, where to look for hatching eggs, how to get them into the incubator, uh, into the brooder, and whatnot. Just to give you a, you know a good chance uh, of for success when you start out. So that was some ideas that uh, I had. Oh, and also I want to mention the uh, uh, coaching or mentorship program that Michael Rose is doing. Um, you can check that out at ccquail.com. Matter of fact, I'm going to put that in the chat room, ccquail.com. Um, check that out, guys. Uh, there's a lot of great information there. Uh, Michael is, he's got two courses over there. One's kind of a, I won't say entry level, but it's, it's more uh, towards people who are just hobbyists basically and then he's got one for people who are in the business or want to start a business keeping quail and there's a lot of really good information there guys it is a paid site but you'll be able to access this access this site and the information on that site forever uh, or you know as long as the website's up which as far as we know is going to be forever um, but yeah check it out Michael does an amazing job and Michael in my opinion is an authority when it comes to uh, this type of information. I mean, he goes above and beyond uh, explaining this stuff. So, again, check that out. Okay, cool. Looks like we've already got some people that are saying they are in here from Florida. 
So I'm going to go ahead and jump over into the chat room. Um, and we will... Uh, we'll go ahead. I guess we'll go ahead real quick and read them. It don't look like we're going to have a whole lot of people in here tonight. So uh, we'll, we'll acknowledge who's in there. Casey Babson's in the house. Is high from the sunny, pollen-covered south. Yep, I know that feeling. Don's in the house. Says hello from South Central Illinois. Welcome, Don. Glad you could join us. Wendy's in the house. i got to move this microphone. I can't read these. Uh, Wendy says, good evening from Illinois. Glad you could join us, Wendy. Alexander Hayes says, hi. Hello. Uh, from Queensland, Australia. Glad you could join us, Alexandra. Grant Harris is in the house. Says, good evening, everyone, from Tucson, Arizona. Glad you could join us. C. Spencer's in the house. Says, hello from Virginia. Uh, Jennifer says hello from Greensboro, North Carolina. Glad you could join us, Gen Jennifer. The Dove Shack says hello from Tacoma, Washington. Cool. Glad you could join us. Uh, Samantha's in the house. Says, As always, hello from Michigan. Glad you could join us, uh, Samantha. What are you doing down there, girl? Don't be chewing on that. Uh, Jennifer says uh, colloquial. Coloquio Farms checking in from Greensboro, North Carolina, and I hope I said that right. Uh, Alicia Watson's in the house, says hello from North Texas. Isaac says hello from Orlando. Iva Hines is in the house, says hello from Northwest Florida. Baby's hatching in the incubator tonight. Cool, congratulations. Um, I have uh, chicks also in the incubator due to hatch tomorrow. C. Spencer says only an hour away from Greensboro. Hate him outdoors says hi Terry from the Florida Panhandle. There's another Floridian. Jalopy guys in the house is tuning in from Western Washington State. Uh, Pappy's Homestead says uh, evening from West Virginia. Everyone glad you could join us. Uh, Matthew Steele says hello from deep inside God's country, Appalachian Mountains. Beautiful up there. Yep. Pappy's Homestead says smash that like button. Show Terry some love. Yeah, you guys can do that. Uh, by hitting the like button kind of helps us out, you know, with the algorithms for YouTube. So, you know, that will show our, our videos a little bit more often. Uh, Michelle says hello from New Baltimore. New Baltimore, New York. Okay. Glad you could join us, Michelle. Fair Parrot Gentry's in the house says, oh, I haven't seen a live, actually live in forever. Glad to see you. Glad you could join us, Fair. Amanda Nolte's in the house says hello from Minnesota. Eric says hello from Northeast Ohio. Glad you could join us, Eric. Robert Halverson's in the house. Says good evening from beautiful, snowy Minnesota. Yep, I see people up north are getting dumped on again. Baby Thomas says said ordered all the parts to make your incubator today. Cool. Can't wait to get it together, and then I'll have to get some eggs. Absolutely. Uh, if you have any questions or you know anything you're not sure about, feel free to you know give me a call or or text me or message me or whatever, and I will help you out best I can. Leah says hello from Ohio. Christopher Hall's in the house. Says hi. Hello. Oh joy. Oh Jitia. J Jitia. I hope I said that right. Hey from Georgia. Four days until lockdown. Cool. Congratulations. Amanda's talking to Robert. <clears throat> Lamont says hello everyone. Glad you could join us. Collier's Custom Tackle says, Building rabbit cages when I got the live notification. 90 of my Caternix eggs are going into lockdown Saturday. Cool. Congratulations. And good luck on the hatch. Pappy says, Hit the like button, folks. Absolutely. Yeah, it's jumping up a little bit. Uh, we got a Facebook user in the house. Says, Hi, folks. Glad to be here with you all again. JP from Oregon here. Glad you could join us, JP. Uh, Julie says hello from Wyoming. Just hatched 21 Southwest Game Bird babies. Loving my hatching time brooders. Cool. Congratulations on the hatch. Figs and Quail says Southwest Game Birds coming first week in April. So excited. Good deal. <laughs> Pappy Thompson says I will need eggs soon. Send them my way. Absolutely. Dennis says, hi from Mass, Massachusetts. Brooder almost done. Uh, needs some eggs. Facebook user says, sign up for the giveaways. Um, for the people that are joining us from Facebook, if you go up to the description um, right above the, the little uh, 
where the um, comment section is, uh, you'll see a link. If you click on that link, you, you give uh, Facebook permission to use uh, your name and your profile icon. Uh, I'm on YouTube and I can't see you, so you either need to do that um, or come over here to YouTube, and that way I can uh, I can you know see who you are. But you, yeah, as long as I know who you are, um, you are automatically in the in the giveaway. I behind says yeah, pick me absolutely. Cheryl says uh, good evening from Southwest Virginia. I drink bourbon. I like that. Hello everyone. Uh, Facebook user says by being on the chat he'll announce the winners at the end of the live yeah absolutely and again for those of you who are on Facebook I can't see who you are if you don't give uh, the app permission to use your name JA says good evening from Atlanta glad you could join us uh, Jaron says my eggs have thin shells is it just a calcium deficiency I give them 22 percent game bird feed uh, what you need to do is look at your uh, calcium uh, levels in the feed. Just look on the tag. You want anywhere between 3.5% up to, you know, 4.5. Um, I haven't seen 5 in a while. But uh, what you can do is uh, pick up some uh, oyster shell, crushed oyster shell, and just sprinkle that in their food, and that will help boost the calcium levels. See Wiley Coyotes in the house. So speaking of hatching eggs, if I wanted to save up eggs to hatch before putting them in the incubator, how do you store them? Um, I just, believe it or not, just store them in my uh, quail room right now because the temperatures are relatively cool. Um, it's not getting up into the 90s in there anymore. So I just store them in there. But, um, you know, de depending on the temperature where you're keeping your birds or inside your house, as long as it's like in the 70s or low 80s, they'll be fine just storing them on the shelf. Um, what I do in the summertime when it gets, you know, really warm, like 90, 95 degrees in my quail room, I have a small dorm refrigerator that I have the temperature turned all the way up so it's the warmest. And it runs about 50 to 52 degrees in there. And I put them in there when I'm collecting for uh, incubation. So, but yeah, you can collect for, you know, up to like seven or ten days and uh, without too much loss of fertility. Julie Rassel's in the house. Is glad to see you. Hope you're doing well. I'm actually feeling pretty good today, so that's one of the reasons for going live. Uh, Jennifer Mills says, Hi, everyone, from South Alabama. Glad you could join us, Jennifer. Bill Thompson's in the house. Is Good evening. Newbie here. Just joined the Facebook group and watching the videos and learning. Eggs ordered and hoping they come soon. Barato 16 should be here tomorrow. Cool. You'll love it. The, the Lumia series um, incubators are really good. I've got one. Wait, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Probably not. It's behind me anyhow. Um, that's a Lumia 16. And then I've also got another Barato out in the quail room or in the incubator room. Uh, let's see. Uh, I drink bourbon, says everyone, please give a thumbs up. Yeah, you guys can do that. Uh, Dennis says, questions, working on breeding cage, cages, how much of a pitch should the egg rollout have? Um, if you're working off of the channel, um, both cages, they have like a 20-inch rollout, uh, and there is an inch and a half to two-inch drop from the back of the cage to the end of the rollout. So any anything right in that area, you know, I think all of mine are two inch and uh, they all roll out fine. If you don't have enough of a slope, the, the problem you run into, the eggs get hung up inside the cage and usually it takes a few of the birds to kick them to get them rolling to where they'll, they'll come forward. But yeah, two inches, a two inch drop in 20 inches. Uh, Carrie says, hi from Utah. I just put 180 eggs from Southwest Game Birds in my homemade incubator. Thanks for what you're doing. Absolutely. And good luck on your hatch, Carrie. That's a pretty good size hatch. Uh, Laura Bissonette. I hope I said that right. Please enter me in the giveaway. You are entered, Laura. Just by being in the chat room, you're entered. Uh, Michelle says, how much would a sponsor have to donate for the kids project? Um, Michelle, what we're working on is I, I try not to ask for sponsorships from, you know, just the, in, the individual. I, I'm trying to find companies 
you know, that can sponsor. Like, we had uh, um, Premier One. They were donating uh, the Lumia 8 incubators, I believe it was. Uh, they were donating those at half cost, but they, they stopped that after so many incubators. Um, and then we have, you know, like a Turnix Corner, the channel here, we give away a, a $25 gift certificate. Um, right now I've been taking donations to buy the incubators and I got a little bit stuck away for, I think, two incubators right now. But if you wanted to put together like a package, um, we did have uh, um, another, oh, I can't think of the name of their homestead right off the top of my head, but they were putting together like a feed package that had some feed, uh, a couple a feeder and a water, stuff like that. Anything that you could put together, you know, if you've got a business, I, I feel more uh, more inclined to take you on as a sponsor than as if you were just, uh, um, you know, an individual. You can make a donation if you want to go that route, um, and there's a link to that over on the uh, KaternusCorner.com uh, website. There's a donation button over there, but yeah, like I say, I'm, I'm trying not to, to take monthly donations from individuals. Uh, Patty Tone says, says, 70 watching and only 21 likes. Come on, folks, hit the like button. We're up to 56 now with 112 watching. Wow. Where did all these people come from? Smash that like button, says Matthew. Uh, Christopher says, my coil are hatching today. Cool. Congratulations. Uh, Kurt says, can't wait to look more about the kids project. Our first coil have hatched in the last two days and our kids are glued to the brooder box and incubator. Cool. Yeah, um, guys, just to give you an idea, I'm going to pull up real quick. Um, these are some of the the past prizes that we had. Um, Thieving Otter Farm donates some hatching eggs. Abram Home said they're the ones that put together a little kit. And uh, I believe they said that they actually might be coming back into it. But Caternus Corner gives a tractor supply gift certificate. Hatching Time donates a, a, a two-section uh, layer rollout cage. And then um, the incubators we, we buy now, we're, we're not getting them from Premier One anymore. But anyhow, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Julie says, for some reason, I'm not connecting. I'll check it out. Um, Julie, I don't know what you're not connecting to. Elber says 18KK. Okay. Chad says, I hatched some eggs from my dark brown quail and had one that's white with speckles. Is this a new breed then? No, that's most likely just uh, like a recessive uh, gene that was hidden in there and it popped up. Uh, especially with whites, um, you, you can be breeding pharaohs, you know, several generations and then have the, uh, a strange white just pop out. And that's just because they, they have that recessive gene hidden in there somewhere. Uh, Julie Maleski says, I'm feeding my chicks Kalmbox start to finish and protein is 22%. Is it okay if I'm offering smashed up dried mealworms for extra protein? Also giving grit with that. Um, yeah, I would be, you can. Um, but any, you know, 22, anywhere from 22 to 30% protein is fine you know, for growing out chicks. Uh, on the lower protein levels, it might take you, you know, an extra week to, to get them up to the weight that the other birds would normally have if it, on a higher protein food. <clears throat> but yeah, you can um, crush up dried mealworms and uh, sprinkle that on top of their food. And uh, I don't, I've never added grit to my birds. I mean, you can, it's not gonna hurt them, but uh, I've never had to. And I did, at one time, was feeding uh, whole mealworms, dried mealworms. They were doing okay, so. Uh, Facebook user says, yes, please. I don't know who you are, but okay. Wiley Coyote says, how to store hatching eggs before putting in the incubator? I think I just answered that. Uh, here's the link for CC Quail. Uh, again, check that out, guys. That's Michael Rose. Uh, does an amazing job. Um, in, in my book, you can't ask for a better tutor to help you out in your in your uh, quail endeavors. 
Andrew says new and would appreciate a live just for newbies. That's uh, especially now because I'm seeing a whole lot of newbie questions over on the Facebook group page. So I thought, and I think I'm going to go ahead and plan on that for next week. Um, I'll put together a little, you know, presentation, real short presentation uh, for the new people, and then we'll do a, you know, a live Q and A answering your questions. Um, let's see. Chris says, "Good evening, everyone. Glad you could join us, Chris." Um, another Facebook user posted ccquail.com, so I don't know who that is. Uh, Christopher says, "My Shire just announced a Quail Academy, huh?" Okay. I don't know anything about that. I've heard about it, but I don't know anything about it, so can't speak intelligently on that. Baron says, hello from Naples, Florida. Okay. Facebook user says, hi from Northeast Wisconsin. Another Facebook user says, my chicks will be hatching next week. Any tips? Um, yeah, just uh, make sure you got your brooder all set up and ready to go uh, and up to temperature um, before the chicks hatch out. And also... Don't get in a hurry to open up your incubator to start pulling out chicks. The chicks will be fine from the time they start hatching up to 48 hours in the incubator. Um, usually I won't open the incubator until I'm ready to just about call the hatch. I will let them go, you know, 24 to 48 hours, pull everything out. If I, if I pull them out at 24 hours, I will normally give the... I'll, leave the rest of the unhatched eggs in the incubator, give them another 24, uh, whatever doesn't hatch, I, I pull the plug in and call it good. So, But yeah, those would probably be the two biggest ones. Make sure that your brooder's set up. Make sure that uh, you don't get you know anxious and want to open up the incubator too early. And uh, have everything ready too. You know, your feed, your water, your feeders, substrate for the brooders, a heat lamp if that's what you're going to use. Uh, Tony's in the house says N. Okay. Uh, Gold Pro Unlimited. Hi, y'all. Glad you could join us. Chris says South Carolina in the house. Glad you could join us. Michael Keene says here from Massachusetts. Glad you could join us. Jennifer says questions. Hello, Terry. I tried hatching eggs from three different places and I've not had a decent hatch. I'm asking if you would consider me for the free eggs from Southwest Game Birds. I will definitely consider you. Um... I'm curious why you haven't got a decent hatch. I mean, were they all shipped eggs? And, you know, shipping does pay, play a, a, you know, a big uh, part of the success of your hatch. You know, I get eggs shipped in here all the time, and sometimes I get really good hatch rates, you know, up to 70, even 80%. Other times I get, you know, 20, 30% hatches. So, uh, yeah, just expect that with shipped eggs. You know, even even if you go to Southwest Game Birds, odds are you're going to get, you know, knock on wood, hopefully a decent hatch. But, you know, just because you went to Southwest Game Birds doesn't guarantee you're going to get a, a decent hatch. Nobody can guarantee um, a percentage of hatch on shipped eggs. It, just, you, you, it can't be done. <laughs> I mean, I know people do, but yeah, it can't be done. Facebook user says hi from Georgia, and another one says Alabama here. Glad you could join us. Uh, Folsom, California, another Facebook user. Tony's in the house. <coughs> hi from Toronto. Glad you could join us, Tony. Grim says hello from Rising Star, Texas. Andrew says good afternoon from northern Alaska. Wow. Northern, I think you're the first Alaskan we've had in here. Uh, Matthew Steele says, Julie, if you have access to combat, switch over to 22% fancy and feathered showbird and breeder mini pellets. Product 120 FOC. Um, yeah, I've never, I've never used the fancy and feather showbird. Um, I, right now I'm using the, I believe it's a 28% game bird turkey starter uh, for my grow outs. And then I switch over to a 16% layer uh, after that. The Joy's in the house says hello from Western Oregon. Mary says Oklahoma here. Glad you could join us, Mary. Christopher, there's a, there's a Facebook user that uh, has figured out how to give Facebook permission. Um, Christopher says, well, howdy from the currently winter, windy southern Pennsylvania. Appreciate all the good info. Absolutely. Glad you could join us. King of Random says hello from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Glad you could join us. 
Cameron says, got some hatching next week. Hopefully everything goes well. I'm sure it will. <clears throat> Jason says, oh yeah, in Iowa. Dale's in the house. Says, Hello from Ladson, South Carolina. Tina says, okay, I don't understand this, but hand-purple-blue-peace hand-pink waving. Okay, must be some code I don't understand. <laughs> Diana Tuttle says, from Kansas, working on building my quail family. Still small, but got eggs going into lockdown in two days. Cool, congratulations, and hope you have a good hatch. Chad says, hello from Minnesota. Uh, Christopher says, what's your remedy for splay legs? Um, I don't treat splay legs. I call chicks that are you know, either born with it or pull a tendon after they um, hatch out. The if, if they're born with splay legs, they're definitely getting cold. Uh, that, that would be my recommendation. Um, if it's due to an incubator that um, has a slippery surface inside, because that can cause it too, um, put down like a, a drawer liner material, something so when the chicks hatch out, they, they can get, uh, you know, good footing. That will prevent splay leg. That, I would rather go with prevention. Um, you know, then try to fix it. I have heard of people that, you know, they make like, uh, they do the shot glass thing, put the, the chick in a shot glass, uh, or make like a, um, I don't know what you call it, like a, a harness to go between their legs to hold the legs together. But, you know, any chicks that I have that I notice if, if they were born with play leg, they get cold. <clears throat> Annie says, uh, so glad I could catch you tonight. Glad you could join us. Um, Facebook users, hello from Folsom, California. Brought home my first Caternic six days ago. Cool. Congratulations. English with Mr. Finn says, good day, guys. Hello from Central Valley of California. Cool. California. Yep. Leah says, question, which feed is better for adult quail? High-protein game bird feed or regular layer feed? I put all my adult birds, once they start laying... They all, they all go on a 16% layer feed. Um, <clears throat> if you keep them on a high protein feed, what's going to happen is they're going to build up, they're going to get fat. They're going to build up fat stores, and overweight is definitely not healthy. Uh, another reason you want to get off the high protein feed is layer feed is usually about $10 cheaper per 50 pound bag than the, the high, <clears throat> than the game bird feed. So I don't know why my throat is, something in here is, uh, got my throat going crazy. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> Jennifer says, my power went out this morning with 300 eggs in various incubation. Luckily, it came back on within an hour. Pshaw. Yeah. Glad it did come back on. 300 eggs would uh, suck to lose that many. Michael says, hello from O'Fallon, Missouri. Glad you could join us, Michael. Backyard Meats is good evening from Texas Gulf Coast. Glad you could join us. Justin's in the house. Says hi from Alabama. Hunter Triple Seven says hi from Iowa. Glad you could join us. Chris says hello from Lug Lugoff, South Carolina. Lug Lugoff, Lugoff. Uh, my birds are laying naturally already. Cool. Congratulations. Don says question. I used the green laser on the seventh day of incubation, hoping to see veins. My fingers felt really cold when I was holding the eggs. Does that shock them? I don't think so. Um, I don't even hold eggs when I candle. I'll just pull the tray out of the incubator and go along with uh, my candler. I also have the green laser. Um, the, the laser takes a little bit of getting used to because you, you want to turn the laser on when you've touched it to the egg, release it when you pull it away from the egg. Because if you try to keep it on like I do with my regular light candler, I just keep it on all the time and just go from egg to egg. But if you try to keep this thing on all the time, you'll blind yourself. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but I don't think the the temperature from your cold hands is going to transfer that fast through the shell to where it, it could actually shock the, the chick. You know, because the, the chick is holding heat. The, the, the entire contents of the egg is holding uh, is heat. So um, I don't think you'll shock them. Gold Pro Unlimited says, best place to buy quail feed at Turner's Corner. Um, 
depends on where you're at. I mean, I would check your local feed stores and, uh, you know, see if they carry the type of feed you're looking for. Uh, you could also check, a lot of people use Chewy.com, C-H-E-W-Y, I think it is, dot com. Uh, and they're buying, like, Kalmbach feeds and other types of feeds off of Chewy, and they deliver, so... Uh, Joyce's question, thinking about building your DIY incubator, what's the most important tip when building? Follow the instructions, please. A, a lot of people try to modify that, uh, modify the incubator or, you know, use a different heat source, a different regulator, different bulbs, and they always run into issues with it. If you build it to the specs on the uh, channel, 90% uh, of the time they work. I won't say perfectly, but they work very well. Uh, you will have to tweak it um, as far as, you know, figuring out how much ventilation you need, um, how much water or how, what size pan you need to get your humidity to where you want it. But now, the, for me, the biggest tip would be follow the instructions or follow the, the video. Don says, all I saw was yolks that floated around and then half full of dark blobs. Um, okay, I don't, Don, I don't know what day you're, you're trying to candle on, but, um, if, if you're looking for, you know, like veins and whatnot inside the egg, you might do better off with a white light versus the, uh, the, um, laser. The laser works really well for, uh, you know, eggs that are almost full term. And I'll, I'll use that for like when I'm going from the incubator into lockdown, I'll just go through real quick, hit them with a laser, and usually I'm just looking for a, a, a bright green uh, air cell and the rest of the egg dark. Then if, if I see that, they go in the incubator. If the entire egg glows, obviously it's no good. So, yeah, you might try, try a white light, see if that doesn't work better for you. Uh, English with Mr. Finn says, I built stackable cages with my boy nearly a month ago, but it's been raining every weekend since then, and we can't paint it to finish. Yeah, you definitely want to get some type of a, a coat on it, you know, some type of a sealer. Um, it's going to help keeping the wood from absorbing, you know, any smells, or any moisture. Um, so, yeah, definitely put a coat on it when, as soon as you can. Uh, Chad says, I would love to hatch some eggs. Cool. Doug says, hello from Utah. Thank you for all the great videos. Absolutely. Um, Facebook user, this is the link he mentioned, Ecamm Live. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, for those of you on Facebook, that's the, the link you're looking for up at the top, I, I believe. I never looked at it, so I don't know. Uh, Pappy Home says, Terry, would it be safe to glue a few strips of foam to the bottom of your incubator, so I thought I wouldn't have to shim up the door um, so it does not drag. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. Um, anything that you do on the outside of the incubator is really not going to affect the operation of it. Um, I've even seen guys, they'll build the entire incubator and then they'll encase it in, in wood. And it, it, it makes for a really nice looking, um, you know, cabinet incubator. But no, it's, it's you can make changes to the incubator. Um, well, I'm not even going to go there. Yeah, you can do whatever you want on the outside of the incubator. It'll be just fine. And that's actually a good idea. Uh, Brittany. Where's my button at here? Okay, there it is. Uh, what causes some chicks to grow so much faster than others? Same hatch. I have some double size of others. Um, those would be the ones that I would be hanging on to. Uh, you probably have some chicks that have what's known as failure to thrive, and they're just not keeping up with, with the, the bulk of the hatch. Um, and that's to be expected. I mean, you'll, you'll find that in, in pretty much every hatch. You might have one or two that just doesn't keep up. Um, those are chicks that I usually cull. Um, if you don't want to cull them, you can grow them out. A lot of times, birds that have failure to thrive end up not making it any anyway, so... But, yeah, the, the bigger birds, those are the ones that you want to hang on to. Those are the ones that are going to be your uh, producers, you know, in, in the in the long run. They're going to have the size, and they're going to have the health and the vigor. So, Becker Meats says, question, do you prefer the flake or fine pine shavings for your dropping pan? 
Um, I use the fine. Um, either one will actually work. The only reason I even put fine shavings in my pan is it helps absorb the moisture out of the manure and helps the manure dry out a little bit quicker. And once it dries, you don't smell it. So, um, but I think either one would, would work, but I do use the fine. Uh, Jason says, how many generations of black have you hatched and have you seen any changes? I believe, Jason, I'm on four, fourth generation now. Um, maybe three. Um, and no, the only I'm, I'm very particular. I do exactly like uh, Rebecca Lynch says. Um, I, I call heavily on that black line. Uh, I've got to where most of the birds that I'm hatching out now are hatching out with solid black feet. And I think I pretty much eliminated any white spots on them. Um, but yeah, and, and the, it seems to me like the, the black is actually starting to get darker. It seems like when I, the first ones that I hatched out were more of like a, a real dark charcoal gray color, I guess you'd call it. Now I'm actually getting some, you know, almost pitch black uh, birds and chicks. So yeah, uh, the biggest thing is culling. Rebecca can tell you, and she will tell you over and over that you, you need to call heavily on that line uh, to keep them going and to keep them getting better every time with every hatch. <clears throat> Five cuss. I don't, I don't know what that means, but okay. Uh, hey, from Nebraska, I'll be hatching my first quail this spring. I live in zone five. Should I wait until May so there's no uh, frost danger or will eggs be all right to ship? Um, I would say you'd be fine shipping the eggs even right now. Um, you know, unless there's a chance that your post postman might leave the eggs outside in the cold, but you could always request that the shipper um, have them hold the eggs at your post office and call you when they're ready for pickup. Um, but, you know, I've, I've shipped eggs and I've gotten eggs shipped to me in the middle of winter and they made it just fine. Wiley Coyote says, what about humidity? I have low humidity. Are you talking about in the DIY box? Um, the thing that I tell, oh, I hope I didn't lose my spot. Okay, there we are. Um, obviously, if you have low humidity, you want to make sure that you increase the size of the water tray in the bottom of the incubator. Um, if you already have the largest pan that you can fit in there, um, what some people do is stand sponges up in that pan. That will help uh, your surface area. Uh, and just keep in mind that it's the surface area of water, not the amount of water. Um, I did see one person posted on the Facebook group page. They took a towel, a strip of a towel, just like a regular bath towel, and hung it from, like, say, where the, uh, the heat chamber is at the top. They hung it down, the towel goes behind the uh, egg racks or the, the hatching baskets, hatching trays, and is hanging in the bottom of the pan. And I, it's wicking water up. And she said she actually got her humidity from the very, I, I want to say either low 30s or high 20s, up to 77%. So that's an option. Um, two, you can play with your vents, but I will advise you do not close off all your vents make sure you have at least two vents open on the incubator um, to keep from having a buildup of carbon dioxide inside the incubator um once is there a giveaway going on for a nice live there is actually three giveaways sticky feet gecko says have you raised button quail i have not uh jeff says hi terry greetings from northwest nebraska Thank you, uh, Jeff. I'm glad you could join us. <clears throat> uh, Justin Potter says, what's the best lighting for layer laying? Um, 16 hours, um, anywhere between 14 and 16, you should get uh, eggs. Also, uh, I use a soft white, um, either a soft white bulb or in my quail room, I have a my overhead lighting is 5600 Kelvin, if that helps at all. But any any kind of a soft, more of a warm light is going to give you, uh, you know, a better better production, I guess you would say. 
But anyhow, yeah, 14 to 16 hours of daylight. Gwen says, hello from Folsom, California. Okay, I think I read that one. Sticky Feet says, hello from the UK. Glad you could join us from the UK. Bernie says, hello from South Carolina. Glad you could join us. Facebook user says, sent my first batch of roos to the freezer camp from my first ever hatch. So rewarding. Can't wait to incubate some more. They didn't meet jumbo weight, only 9.9 ounces at 10 weeks. Well, that was good that you sent them to the freezer camp then. Ooh, backache. Uh, Donald says, I have one quail hatch today. How long should I wait to check? Um, Donald, that's probably an early hatcher. Um, definitely, I, I, I'm going to say the bulkier eggs will probably hatch tonight or tomorrow. Um, I usually get the same thing, usually around, you know, late day 16, sometimes early day 17. I'll get one or two hatch, and then late seven, day 17 or early 18, the bulk will hatch. So, yeah, just give them time. Wendell says, Hurricane Covey made it today. Thanks, Don, for reminding me. Cool. Glad you could join us, Wendell. Vantasy Island says, please enter me in the giveaway. You are. Got to keep an eye on the time here. <coughs> Chelsea says, hello from Missouri. This is the first live I've caught, but I've been watching your videos to help me with a quail. You've been a huge help. I'm also in the Facebook group. Cool. Okay, not talking to me. Oh, sorry guys, my back's killing me. Rudy says, I just hatched 70 quail. One bird is rusty colored all over. I don't know what it is. Um, it could be a, a roux carrier. Um, or it could be a you know a pharaoh that's just really it's like a sex link brown it's got a really rusty colored chest and and down the back and whatnot so um, yeah without seeing a picture it'd be hard to call that one alicia says question if you have to separate a large batch into multiple brooders will you have trouble reintroducing those birds into breeding groups in the future now, um, usually what I'll do is I'll set up breeding groups before they become sexually mature. Um, but no, you, you shouldn't have any issues with it. <clears throat> uh, Joseph, you are entered in the giveaway. Christopher says, my only gripe with the hatching time incubator is the small windows during hatch time. Yeah, I said that that was one of my negative points on the uh, the last uh, um, review video we did. Uh, Juan, you're already entered. Bill says, I like the idea of all wire cage in your videos. What J clip players are good and where did you get them? I'm looking for a small quantity of the half by one coated wire to make two or three cages to start out with. Um, J clip players and clips I got on Amazon. As far as a small quantity of half by one, get a hold of fencerwire.com and see if they'll cut you um, what you need. <clears throat> oh, guys, hold on one second. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, unfortunately, I'm going to have to call this one uh, quits for tonight. Something's come up. Um, let's see. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, where did it go? Where did it go? <clears throat> okay, yeah, I, I do apologize for that, guys, but something come up, and I've got to get off here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and announce the uh, winners real quick um, for the giveaways. Uh, for those of who I call your name, send me your information to terry at caternixcorner.com. Make sure I get a good shipping address, good email address, and a, a good phone number. Uh, Southwest Game Birds Hatchery Choice is going to Jennifer. Um, Jennifer, you asked me for the eggs. You didn't give me a last name, but I'm sure you will. Uh, you will know which one I'm talking about. Iva Hines, you're going to get uh, the eggs from me, Gulf Coast Quail, and the $50 hatching time gift certificate is going to Wiley Coyote. So. Uh, make sure you guys send me uh, your information, and I will get that forwarded on to the people that need them. And it usually takes about a week to two weeks before things go out. So, guys, um, I apologize for having to call it uh, short tonight, but like I say, something's come up. So, join us next week, guys. We're going to do something, I think, for the newbies. And, uh, yeah, uh, thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one.